Hello, hello, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. How is everybody doing? I hope everyone is doing great. Friends, how are you doing? Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, atheists, Christians, Jews, and everybody else. How is everything going on today? Well, I had my medical procedure. I thank you for, for you guys who pray for me. And I came back. I am feeling a little bit dizzy, but uh, it was successful and great. Everything was wonderful. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise the Almighty God, our Father, who loved us and gave his son to us so that we be we can be a family of God, the children of God, escape from the twist of Allah, from the destruction of Allah and Islam and other religions. But in Christ, only in Christ, only in the Son of God. Now, there are peoples who are talking about color. The color of their skin is a big problem. And Sajid Lifan says, Islam has nothing to do with skin color. Whether you are black, you are green, you are white, you are whatever, Allah doesn't care. Allah doesn't care. What cares is whether you are Muslim or not. Says Sajid. Sajid uh, is telling us Allah has nothing to do with the skin color. It's a trivial matter. It's a truthful. It's, it doesn't have any value before Allah, skin color. But Allah cares for you if you are Muslim or not. If you are following the path of Allah, the only righteous religion of Allah, the nice religion of Allah, or you are reading the Quran of Allah, the Quran Karim, the generous Quran of Allah, or not. People say Holy Quran. There is no Holy Quran because Allah never said Holy Quran. Quran Karim, Quran, the noble Quran, noble Quran. Okay, let's see and learn about the beauty of Islam. The beauty of Islam. Yeah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome all viewers. So yesterday I came across a video that apparently went viral on social media. It appears to be a conversation between a mother and her daughter about identity. Do you identify as a Muslim first or as being black first? And the title of the video is Anti-Black Racism in Muslim Community. So since this is a topic of discussion right now, I wanted us to listen to what's being said in the video and inshallah I'll share some of my thoughts and I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this beneficial. I have a question for you. Are you Muslim first or are you black first? What do you think? Muslim first and black first? Yeah. Which one are you? I'm a Muslim first. So firstly, I want to state the obvious, but I think it's important to point these things out. The mother obviously has a very strong accent. I think it's safe to say that she was born and raised in another country, whereas her daughter, it seems like she was born and raised in America. And although there... It doesn't have to do anything. The question is, are you black first or Muslim first? It doesn't have to do with accent. I have accent. Do you know? Yeah, this man came from there. That man came from uh, that. Blah, 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 blah. There are so many different directions we can take this video. So many different things we can focus on and discuss. I personally really want to focus on this aspect. The difference between the mother and the daughter. Because when the mother is asked, are you Muslim first or are you black first? It's as if the mother finds it amusing. Like, what kind of question is that? Of course, wallahi, I swear by Allah, I'm Muslim first. It's almost as if this is a 
nonsensical question. I mean, how can you compare a skin color to being a Muslim? Yeah. But let's see how the daughter responds. Okay. Like, yeah. How can you compare a skin color with your for, with your religion, with Islam? What is the problem with you guys? It has nothing to do with the skin color. Can I see your hand? Yeah. Give me your hand. What color is this? Black. So why are you not black first? Did you choose to be black? No. Did you choose to be Muslim? Yes. I bought them for Muslim. No, <laughs> you can leave the deen at any time, but you can't leave your race at any time. So obviously the daughter is trying to prove a point to her mother. And it's important for all of us to keep in mind that the daughter got this information somewhere, right? This, these are things, concepts, ideas that she was taught, that she learned. One might even say that she was indoctrinated with due to social media, due to many things that have been going on in this country with identity politics. And she seems very confident in her stance. It's almost as if she feels like she understands something that her mother doesn't. Whereas I would say that it's the other way around. It's not that the mother is confused because this concept of being black and identifying as being black over being a Muslim is something that's so complicated and needs to be explained. But to me, it seems more like the mother is confused at like, why would you make such a comparison? Like, what's going on with my daughter to think that identifying as a skin color is more significant or more important than identifying as a Muslim by identifying as one that submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is upon proper guidance, who is on the straight path. So what does the daughter do to try to prove her point? She says, can I see your hand? What color is this? The mother says black. And the daughter asks, so why are you not black first? And the mother just looks at her, not because like this is too complicated above her head, it's because this, this doesn't make sense. How does this prove that I should identify with being black over being a Muslim? This is comparing something that's literally skin deep, that's superficial. Yeah. It's comparing a skin color yeah. with the deepest, most important, significant aspect of a human being. Yeah. yeah these people are comparing the color of the skin that is on the top of the body, the superficial structure, than the deep being of Islam. The deep religion which penetrates the heart and goes down the religion of Allah. You're comparing this? Come on. It's like what kind of what kind of comparison is this? Then the daughter asks, did you choose to be black? And the mother says, no. Then the daughter asks, did you choose to be Muslim? And before the mother can even respond, the daughter says, yes. And the mother tries to respond. I'm not sure if she's speaking English or if she's speaking another language, but it sounds like she's saying, I was born Muslim. So just like she was born black, she was also born Muslim. Which is true, everyone is born upon the fitrah in a state of Islam. And I believe the mother, she was born into a Muslim family, so they raised her upon the fitrah to remain Muslim. But regardless, the point that the daughter is trying to make isn't being proven by any of the arguments that she's making. She says that you can leave Islam at any time, but you can't leave your race at any time. Well, that's not technically true. For example, let's say that this mother actually does want to leave her race. She says, I'm not going to identify as black anymore. I am going to identify as white. Can she do that? No. Sure, why not? No. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's do something. Let's do something to debunk this uh, 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 this thought, this fallacious ag argument. Let's go to um, Mr. Google, peace be upon him, Prophet Google, black color, black man, black, okay, black man, Prophet Google, peace be upon you, peace be upon you, Prophet Google, black man, black man, what? Now, now, here comes these people. There is a man, okay? There is another black man. I am white. Hey, <laughs> I am white. This one, I'm sorry, he's crying. 
This black man came out. Okay? Emmanuel Echo. I am white. Hey, America, listen. I am white. I am white. Okay? I am white. This guy says, I am white. I am white. Oh, there come another man. Black man. Oh, come on. Don't you know I am white? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, can he say, I am black? No, we know him. He's, he's not black. He's white. He's white. One could argue, but she's not white. She's black. Therefore, she is misguided. Well, the same thing could be said about somebody who leaves Islam. They're also misguided. Actually, they're far more misguided. They're much further from the truth. Dare I say, they are far more delusional. And if you think this is a false comparison, well, in a sense, it is because, as I said, leaving Islam is far worse. Rejecting your Lord and the guidance he sent is far more astray than somebody who's wrong about the color of their skin. But both scenarios have a lot of unsaid implications. So, for example, when somebody says that they're black, this mother and her daughter, their skin isn't literally black. Clearly, their skin is brown. Also, black people are not a monolith. Black people come in all sorts of different shades of color. They speak different languages. They have different cultures. I mean, just on Twitter alone, the reaction to this video. Why Why you call them black people? Black people. Black people. If, they, if there is nothing, it's if that is superficial. Why you call him a superficial black? Hey, man. Had people of certain cultures who would be considered black arguing over whether or not she was from their tribe, whether or not she was from their country. So technically speaking, somebody could leave this idea of being from the black race and actually be moving towards something more correct, something more specific and relevant to their actual history and ethnicity. But the point here is, is not just to refute this daughter, but she's been fed these ideas. She's living in a society that has influenced her and convinced her that first and foremost, she is black. She thinks that she didn't choose that. She can't help that. There's nothing she can do. It's just a fact. She is black. But that's yes, it's a fact. You are white. It's a fact. You are white. What can you do? Can you change over time? Can you go and paint like your prophet did? Oh man, can you do anything with the, like the the prophet did? The prophet Muhammad. You did Pete. Why you did, Peter? Just you look like you want to look like your prophet, yeah? When you have this beard, you look. You want to be like your prophet. So the blackness it doesn't matter. Allah sees the heart. Allah doesn't care the blackness. That's how his message is. If you want to listen to him, but uh, that is what he is teaching us. Ah, uh, let's go. What does? the religion of Allah say Bilal that's Ethiopian you know I'm Ethiopian and Bilal was Ethiopian from Ethiopia from East Africa Bilal he became a slave and taken as a slave from Africa and then what happened he had a very nice voice and then Muhammad the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam train him to shout on the top of a rock, on the top of a tree, so that he wake up the lazy Arabs to pray, to accept his new religion and practice the religion. So, this Bilal was a slave, and he said to Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, if you have brought me to yourself, then keep me <laughs> for yourself. But if you have brought me for Allah's sake, then leave me for Allah's work. You know what? You know what, Abu Bakr? You know what, the Prophet Muhammad? You guys are exchanging me. You are just, you brought me from the Prophet, and now I am a slave. And every morning I go up and on the top of the roof and I cry, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar. Every night, I'm a slave. 
I'm a slave. I'm a slave. Ya Abu Bakr. Ya Akhi. I am a slave. I am a slave. I am a slave. Why don't you even leave me for Allah? Let me go and, you know, cry on the top of the roof for Allah. But you don't leave me. I, I go out in the morning and I cry and uh, in the night and I cry and I cry three times in the night in the day also and now I'm also working for you why don't you free me to work the work of Allah he didn't marry they didn't allow to marry he, they didn't allow to uh, have his family he died as a slave without family that is the prophet, the beautiful religion of Allah. Allah doesn't care for your skin color. What are you talking about? Huh. Okay. Now, another one. This is Sunnah. You can go and search for yourself in Sunnah.com. Abu Dawud reported God's messenger as saying the prophet of Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, God created Adam. When he created him and struck his right shoulder. Wow, a hit on the right shoulder of Adam. Allah picked up his hand and then poof, on the right shoulder. He struck him and brought forth his offspring. White like small ants. And like white, white, beautiful, white, beautiful, white, amazing white came up and he struck his left shoulder and brought forth his offspring black as though they were charcoal and then Allah again he raised his hand and kicked strike the shoulder of Allah or Muhammad I mean Adam sorry for this poor Adam Adam, Adam, this poor Adam, oh, hit him. Then he said to the party on his right side, Paradise to the white one. Paradise, I do not care. I don't care, I am Allah. So I created you white and you are for paradise. And he said to the party that is on the left shoulder, to hell and I don't care. Wow, to hell I don't care. Said the Prophet Muhammad. So black is nothing before Allah. Allah doesn't care for your color. <laughs> Says the man great this convert. No, Allah doesn't care. Allah doesn't care. Allah doesn't care. Another third source. Allah's apostle said, uh -huh. You should listen to and obey your ruler even if he was an Ethiopian black. Like me, Ethiopian. Like a slave whose head looks like raisin, raisin, raisin-headed black because our hair is... <laughs> My head is the reason that I saw. You should obey it. You know what? You know what, my friends? We Ethiopians allow Muhammad. When he was in trouble, he sent his family. We secured. Our king secured, protected. Gave them land. And accept them as their, their own people. Protect the family of Muhammad from all problem and secure them gave them land the, the the king of ethiopia he said oh and then he said oh really yeah send another three times his family his brother his uh, uh, you know he went sent to three times to ethiopia when muhammad when arabs you know you know was against his false religion and then persecuted him kicked him out when he robs the caravan they just hunt and you know uh, hit him out from there and then he fled 
an Ethiopian received him. And now imagine he insulted us. Did he say, oh, the Ethiopian people are very nice. They took care of my, pro my family. They protected even, you know, oh, these people, they are nice. No, no, Muhammad doesn't say that. Sees our reason headed black, useless. You should obey even that. If it's like that. that is that is the religion of Allah. The religion of Allah says that. But let's go to the Bible. Learn about uh, uh, about uh, what is the color of the skin. How is the, the Ethiopian treated in the Bible? How is the Ethiopian treated in the Bible? The, the black people. Ethiopia means Ethiopia, which is a Greek word, black faced, black. Their face is black, so they call us Ethiopian. So, Abedmelech went forth. Okay, what's the, who is Abedmelech? Now, when Abedmelech, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah into a dungeon, the king then sitting in the gates of Benjamin. And then what did he went the Abedmelech and asked the king, What are you Israelites doing? Why are you just, you know, killing Jeremiah? What is the problem? He's your people. I'm black. I came here. But Jeremiah is your people. What the, What's wrong with this, you Israelite? What happened to you, king? Abedmelech went forth out of the king's house and spoke to the king, saying, hey, that's what he said. I, I just summarized to you. Then the king commanded Abedmelech, the Ethiopian, saying, take from hence thirty men with thee and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he die. Because Abedmelech told him he was almost dying. What's wrong? Jeremiah is a man of God. Why these people threw him into the dungeon, into a pit? Why? And then the king commanded, Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Go, go, go. Save Jeremiah. So Abedmelech saved Jeremiah. So Abedmelech took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took thence old cast clouds and old rotten rugs and laid them down by the cord into the dungeon to Jeremiah. So he sent it and asked him to hold the rug and come out from the dungeon. So he brought out. This is the whole thing you can read, Jeremiah 13. Let me go to the last part. God is back to Abedmelech. Who? Uh, um, go, speak, go and speak to Abedmelech. Go uh, speak and speak to Abedmelech the Ethiopian, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring my words upon this city for evil, and not for good, and they shall be accomplished in, the, in, the day, in that day before thee, before your eyes. And then what happened? What did he say? But I will deliver thee, in that day, says the Lord, and thou shalt not be given into the, the hand of the men of whom thou art afraid. For I will surely deliver thee, surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fail by the sword, but thy life shall, shall be for a prey unto thee, for yourself. Nobody is going to hurt you. Because thou hast put thy trust in me, says the Lord Jehovah, the God of Israel. So this is Abed Melech the Ethiopian and the God of Israel speaking to the, uh, 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 Jeremiah about Abed Melech. He is going to protect him even if the white, the, the Israelite will be destroyed. I'll protect Abed Melech. I'll protect you. Is, is God, 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 this is the God of Israel. He doesn't care for your color. He doesn't care if you trust in the Lord God Almighty. He doesn't care for your color. No. 
He doesn't care. He care that he believe and come and save. So God loves the Ethiopians, the blacks, and the white, and then the Hindus, the Indians, and then the, uh, the Arabians, and everybody, and Americans. The love of God is for God so loved the world. There is no race in God. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The life of God. Okay? There is nothing like, like our God. He's amazing. He's amazing. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. All of you, the black, the green, the old, the male, the female, and everybody is, what are they? The children of God. For as many as of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Not, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. The slave, that means. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. You are all one in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if ye be Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed, Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. The promise of God. The promise of God. I have one more, one more. <clears throat> Song of Solomon. Song of Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black and beautiful. Huh? I am black and beautiful. O oh, doubters of Jerusalem. O oh, doubters of Jerusalem. I am black and beautiful. Can you imagine how the Lord, the God, the, this is... Can you compare this to the uh, to Allah to to, to the, the Arabian God, the Arabian Moon God? No, no, no. I am black and beautiful, and I am black and beautiful. I'm a reason he did. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Come on, man. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I am black and beautiful and I love Jesus. I am black and beautiful and I love Jesus. I love black and beautiful oh doubters of Jerusalem. So black man, white man, green, yellow, whoever you are, you are black beautiful before God. God loves everybody. But race, racism, racism is always, you know, in America and everywhere it exists. But not in the Bible, not in the Bible. The Bible is a book of, it, it, it's color blind, color blind. It doesn't matter for your color. For God loves the black people as he loves the white one. God loves the Indians as he loves the Chinese. God loves the Israelites as he loves Americans. And everywhere and everywhere. The God of heaven is a God of love. Love! You know what the language of God? Love! For God is love. The Bible says what? God is love. Thank you for watching. And uh, uh, just Muslims come to Jesus and enjoy this one. Okay? All right. Thank you for watching. May the Lord richly bless you. Have a wonderful night.